What are those voices in your head that hold you back and tells you what you can or cannot do and makes you doubt yourself of what you are capable of? Today, we're going to be addressing limiting beliefs that might hold you back from achieving your dreams, achieving your goals, building the wealthy life you desire, okay? And I'm going to be addressing how you can overcome them and build the life that you desire. Hey friend, welcome back to my channel. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the topic that I'm sure you heard a lot about, limiting beliefs, okay? Now, limiting beliefs are beliefs that hold you back. They are beliefs that limit you, like the word says, that tells you what you are or are not capable of. Now, most of these beliefs were built maybe your childhood. Maybe somebody told you, oh, somebody, you're not good at this, you're not good at that, or whatever it is. I mean, I shared in my last video that when I was growing up, they used to tease me that I was not good at dancing. And that was a limiting belief for me for many years. So I didn't attempt to dance anymore until... Um, a couple of years later, I went to the gym. I found out that there was a Zumba class and I really wanted to dance Zumba. And so I decided to question my limited belief and the rest, they say, is history. So today, we're going to be addressing those limiting beliefs and how to overcome them. Now, a lot of the times, your limiting belief might be the reason why you are at the level you are at. Especially if you want to do more and be more. You might be thinking, oh, I, I don't have capacity for more or people like us are not the ones that get this kind of opportunities or I was not lucky enough to have A, B, C, D and that's why, you know, my life hasn't moved further or whatever it is that is a limited belief in your mind. So a couple of years ago when I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, I had a session with this very, very talented lady and during my session, we were having a conversation about what she could do with her talent and her gifts. And then she kept hesitating. I kept pointing out, oh, you have the strength, you have the strength, you have the strength. You could do A, B, C, D to make more money to, you know, earn multiple streams of income to do A, B, C, D. But she was hesitating. So I asked her, I said, what is wrong? What is holding you back? And so as we began to have this conversation and unpack her past and how, what, how, what happened when she was growing up, we uncovered that when she was growing up, one thing her mother always used to tell them, her and her siblings, was this kind of opportunities are not for people like us. Okay? This kind of opportunities are not for people like us. Now, imagine what that will do for a child. If the kind of opportunity are not for people like her, then why would she, how dare her go for those kind of opportunities? So whilst I was there as a coach, telling her that she was capable, she was able, she could do whatever it is that she could do, she was not seeing it because she was told growing up by her mother, somebody who was so close to her, that that kind of opportunity is not for people like her. So you can imagine that as a grown woman, she was still struggling to overcome that belief and you know go on to do what it is that she wanted to do. Now, so how do you challenge your limiting belief? Okay? And this is a process that I'm constantly working on because I realized that fortunately or unfortunately, it's not going to be overnight. And sometimes when you reach a certain level, okay, you begin to, you uncover new limiting beliefs. I think it's um, Gay Hendricks, I call it the upper limit problem. Okay. You get to a certain level and you're like, oh my gosh, there's something new that I need to overcome. There's something new that I've not done that I have to confront and you know, and it's in your face. So the first thing I want you to do is to get a pen and a paper. All right? A pen and a paper. Now, I used to be the kind of person that I did not like to write. I did not like to journal. I used to have friends that I say, oh, you know, I love journal. Journaling is going to be like, journaling care. No. <laughs> because I used to say, like, my life, my writing, I think faster than I write. You know, and sometimes the way I talk, you know, I talk fast. So, you know, my brain is working fast. So I like, you know, writing is just stressful. But I started to journal last year february and changed my life changed my life because before when they say get a pen and paper i was like you know i can write it on my tab or my phone or whatever it is why don't they pen and paper but when i started to journal there's just something magical about taking a pen using your own hands and writing something down that is just beautiful so write down what it is that you want to do but you just feel like ah, i cannot do this you know i'm not capable or whatever the stories or the excuses you've told yourself now, 
when you write it down, I want you to notice what are those negative thoughts that pop up? What are those limiting beliefs that, you know, hold you back? You know, recently, um, we're doing a project uh, in our company, sort of an inclusion project. And I remember when I was thinking through it and writing the, the, the project, I said to feel some panic and some fear. And so I paused and I thought about it. Why are you afraid? Why are you panicking? I realized that it was because I was going into, you know, new territory. It was not my comfort zone. It wasn't an, a, an area that I had sort of knowledge or expertise around. And so it made me scared as to if I was capable of doing it. So what I want you to now do is to challenge that narrative. So the first thing you write it down, okay, notice the, the, the thoughts that are coming up. And then challenge that narrative. What is the narrative that is playing in your head? What are the, what is the thing that you're afraid of? Okay, like for me, I thought, oh my gosh, I don't have the skill set to do this. All right? And then when you challenge a narrative and say, why not? You say, I can't do this. You find out, why not? I can't start this project. Why not? I can't write that book. Why not? You know, the people that are doing it, they have two heads. <laughs> so challenge the narrative, okay? And then reframe the narrative. Turn your can't into can. So you can say, how can I? I remember when I went to self-publish my book, um, I think it was seven years ago. I was so scared because I'd never written a book. I didn't know anything about book um, writing books. But I, so I, I put it off for some time until I decided to say, how can I? I spent hours upon hours researching, watching videos, you know, talking to experts, talking to other people that have written books so that I could turn my can't into a can and I eventually published my book. If you check the description, you see my book, Up Level, an amazing book that will help you um, up level your life and create the abundance that you desire in your life and business. Now, so that's the, that's the third thing. Reframe the narrative. The fourth thing is find role models. Find people who have done the thing that you said you wanted to do. There is so, something that is so powerful about mirroring. I think it's a technique in psychology called mirroring. When you can see other people that have achieved it and because of that, it inspires you to achieve it. Um, you know, one of the things that I learned, I, I, I am the CEO of a tech startup. One of the things I learned is the fact that a lot of women, the more women see more women running tech startups, becoming more successful, the more women will be able to do it because it's called mirroring. It's much more easier for men because more men have done it. So the more we women do it, the more women will be able to mirror us and do it. So find role models, find people who have done or achieved the kind of success you desire and mirror them. And that's one of the things that when I was starting in business years ago, I found a couple of people that I really admired that were successful. I sought them as my role models, as my mentors. And because they could do it, I felt inspired. I felt motivated that I could also do it. Now, and I want you to, once you've done that, I want you to replace all your negative thought process. I can't, you know, I'm not qualified. I'm not able to positive uh, thoughts. So you can do this by creating positive affirmations, okay? I want you to write down positive affirmations that tell you what you are capable of. So one of the things I did when I wanted to build my sense of identity is that I created some positive affirmation of who I wanted to become. Like I said to say things like, I am a queen. I carry myself in, in a regular mindful way. I'm a highly feminine woman. I'm a successful woman. I'm a, you know, I'm a money-making magnet. I'm a, you know, the things that you want to do. And one thing I learned being a Christian is that when you say I am, you're putting the name of God. Okay. So you're actually getting like your spiritual backing to ensure that becomes your reality. So I am is powerful. I am worthy. I am capable. I am successful. I can do, you know, so you, by saying those things, you're literally beginning to transform your possibilities. So that's very important. And then the next thing you want to do is to start small. Okay. I shared in my last video that one of the things my father taught me when I was growing up is how do you eat an elephant? One piece at a time. You might not always eat the whole elephant because it's so mighty, but start small, okay? Take baby steps towards your goals. Everything doesn't have to be perfect for you to start, okay? I learned that done is better than perfect. Start small. Like, I just, I remember last year when I wanted to take my YouTube channel very seriously, I had so many limiting beliefs. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this. And then someone challenged me. I said, just start. And here I am. <laughs> almost a year since June last year doing this video. So start small, 
take baby steps and then the more you work towards them begin to hit some milestones you are proving your limiting belief wrong okay and then the next thing you want to do is celebrate your wins there is no win that is too small okay there is no win that is too small over the weekend i got something for myself that i had wanted to get for almost four months you know if you see how i was dancing celebrating in fact i still feel the euphoria the joy of you know doing that it wasn't something big for other people but for me knowing that i have needed this thing for months you know and i finally got it it gave me so much joy it puts me in an expansive mode and i just started to plan okay this is the next thing i'm going to get this is the next thing i'm going to do because i did this one thing okay so celebrate your wins every step forward is a victory remember my rich friend you are capable of anything you set your mind to okay so you need to identify shatter those limiting beliefs and if it is knowledge as a knowledge gap i want you to find the knowledge find the people that will you know teach you that will you can learn from on youtube you're watching youtube find the experts and learn from them okay and you are on your way to seeing all your dreams come to pass and shattering all your limiting beliefs if you found this video useful please like this video subscribe to this channel share this video with your friends your community let's all shatter limiting beliefs and begin to build the successful life that we desire yay i'm rooting for you and i will see you again in the next one bye bye